Eric Mays, Managing Director of High Performance and National Teams at USA Football. And I'm David Anderson, CEO and co-founder of Breakaway Data, giving athletes their data and maximizing their opportunities. Thanks for having us today. Yeah, yeah appreciate you being here. Absolutely. And why don't you uh, give us a little background about uh, Breakaway Data and what you do, David? Yeah, so, I mean, I think it all starts kind of my background. Uh, having played in the NFL, uh, played at Thousand Oaks High School and played at Colorado State, played football there. I'm a football guy through and through. Uh, played wide receiver. Um, got drafted in 2006 in the NFL. And, um, you know, that's when I first started realizing how much data was being used as, you know, you go through the draft process and all of a sudden you're ranked and you're, you know, they're measuring you this, this, that, the other. You're, you're doing all this stuff at the combine and how valuable those numbers are. And uh, I was fortunate enough to play six and a half years at the, in, in the NFL um, with the Houston Texans and uh, at the time the Washington Redskins and a little quick stint on the Denver Broncos. And then, uh, let's see, went to graduate school, got my uh, MBA in data science. And then I really realized how much data was used in sports and um, started working in sports tech, sports data ever since. And Breakaway Data um, was the brainchild of myself and my co-founder, Steve Guerra. And, um, you know, we always just realized that there are a ton of opportunities in sports, uh, but one of the biggest ones was giving athletes back their information because they're the people that can use it the best. And uh, that's where we started and uh, excited to be here with you guys and what, what we've been doing with uh, professional athletes and how we can do it for USA football. So that's kind of where it all started. But I mean, you guys have some pretty impressive backgrounds yourself and where you're where you're going, where you're taking this. You're on the high you're on the high performance team. Right? I am. Yeah. So uh, our high performance and national teams department really got its feet underneath it about two and a half, three years ago. Uh, USA Football uh, is football's governing body here in the United States. Yep. We're a sole member of IFAF, which is the International Federation of American Football. So think uh, FIBA or FIFA for other aligned sports, and we're the recognized sport organization for the USOPC. So that gives us the ability to field national teams across uh, the United States to compete internationally. So with that, we've been fielding teams since the early 2000s in tackle football, in flag football. We've been successful in yeah. the sport, right? The United States continues to be dominant, which is expected, right? Mm -hmm. And we want to continue that. But as flag football specifically has grown across the United States and across the world, IFAP has 70 plus member countries. Our last world championships in 2021 had 40 plus teams, 20 plus countries. Um, it was really, um, an intentional effort on the part of our CEO, Scott Hallenbeck, to think strategically and proactively about evolving our program to the caliber of the Olympics, right? We hope that this sport uh, is granted the opportunity to be an Olympic sport one day, uh, hopefully in 2028, yeah. uh, if not beyond. So we've been very intentional about what that looks like for us at USA Football. Um, my background is, is policy organization, um, but then also like yourself, I played football. Played yeah. football for uh, 18 seasons since I was five years old all the way through college. I coached the game. I love the game. I love every bit of being on field with my teammates, what it taught and instilled in me as a, as a man, as a man of character, as, as someone who wants to give back to athletes. And to be able to pour that in now to um, a discipline of the sport that may change how this game is viewed across the world is something it's kind of tremendously cool. important So um, and uh, tremendously impactful for me. Um, data is a big piece of that. Yeah. So now as we're looking at um, a sport that at the elite level is very much in its infancy, mm -hmm. it's very important for us to think about what does the top tier elite flag football player look like um, on the field, um, but also biomechanically. Yeah. Right? Um, and that type of football player may be different than what you would typically think of in tackle football. So we're going through this phase of identifying that and then um, aligning our selection procedures to that and then our development procedures from the grassroots all the way up to the podium, as we like to say. So um, we're really excited about this partnership with Breakaway Data because we believe that what you are doing will be very instrumental in what we're trying to achieve. And that's the way to do it is, is first you got to know where you want to go, right? You got to have that vision um, on what data to collect, what does it look like? And the, the biggest question is, what does success look like? What does good look like? Yeah. Because if you're just collecting data and you know what, don't know what good data looks like, it doesn't matter if you have the, the Whoop device, the Aura Ring, whatever. If you don't know, you know how many sleep hours is good sleep and what strain score is a good strain score and whatnot, there's no relevance to that information. So that starting point is key, right? Where you know what 
what good football players look like. And, and okay, now we want to figure out what good flag football players look like because then you can really start collecting quality information mm -hmm. downstream and developing those players and say like, oh, if you want to be like this, this is where you need to get. It's, it's, it's funny, like we know now what a, that a 4-4 is fast, but I always think back to like the first time they did it. There might have been a guy that ran a 4-3 and they're like, I think he's the fastest guy here, but we don't we don't know. Is that fast? I have no idea of that. And uh, you know, I mean, the, so it's it's funny as you start collecting data and you start this process. Not until you look back three, four, five years, you really realize how rich that information is and how, man, I wish we knew now. Well, I wish we knew that then because we right. could have applied it in cool new ways. Like that's that's always what you'll find out, which is, is always the fun journey about data. But specifically in high performance, what have you seen lately? Kind of you know, when you think about a professional athlete. There's guys that play these different positions and they have to apply data differently, whether you have to gain weight, lose yep. weight, whether you have to run faster, get healthier. What have you seen the difference in flag football and how these athletes approach the game versus kind of traditional football? I think for flag football, one of the differentiators for athletes is um, how they move on the field. So flag football, um, if you're, if you're those that aren't familiar with the sport, um, tr traditional tackle football, 100 yard field by, by 53 and a half, right? Uh, flag football is 50 yards by 25 yards. So your space is a lot more tight and compact as mm -hmm. compared to traditional tackle. We're five on five versus 11 on 11, um, and everyone is eligible. The center, you know, the quarterback can, can get off the backfield and receive a pass. Um, so it's very dynamic, very fast. And the stopping of the play, flag football, is pulling the flag versus making a tackle. So one of the um, physical attributes that are very important in flag that probably is important in tackle but maybe not as much is being able to change your vertical plane um, to be more evasive to a flag pull. So for example, one of the um, qualities that we look at is, a, is the ability to um, do what's called a flag lunge, which is a, it's a walking lunge where basically the, the butt of the athlete is almost scraping the ground. The flag's so hmm. low that the defender can't grab it yeah. uh, and stop the play. Um, so while we know what that is, now the next step is how do we test for it? How do you show that in a, in a combine scenario? Um, how do you show that in screenings or functional movement? Uh, and then uh, back to what I said earlier is how do we begin to develop that? So if I have a 12 year old boy or girl coming in and I know that this is the top and something is very important, how do I get them there? Yeah. Um, so that's just an example on how, how flag uh, can differentiate itself a little bit. Same thing with quarterback play. Um, you know, three-step drop standing in a pocket doesn't exist in yeah. football. There's yeah. no offensive line. You have an unobstructed rush. You have to be able to evade a rusher and throw the ball accurately in a very tight, compact window. So as we're looking at quarterback play, um, we're looking at accuracy off of the wrong leg yeah. or things of that sort. Yeah, You're looking to throw the ball exactly. off, you know, different planes, different arm slots, different all sorts exactly. of fun stuff. So, yeah. so um, we're, we have to take our blinders off a bit when we're assessing what we're building toward. That's fun. Yeah, the, uh, the, the in a lot of ways, it's, uh, you know, it's like three on three basketball and that, like how it's confined and it kind of breeds a different type of game. Like I've been seeing a lot of that. Like mm -hmm. I grew up a hooper. I would have been perfect for flag football. I didn't actually play tackle football until high school. Um, you know, back then there wasn't really a lot of organized flag football. It was capture the flag back mm -hmm. when we were playing and things like that. But um, I've just noticed a lot of kids start playing flag football now too, rather whether they continue on their career. But I think probably out here in Southern California, what I've seen is 90% of players are start with flag instead of in some form, almost all the way up until high school. And then that's when they pick up uh, tackle football. So you got that to your advantage for sure, is that, that, the, that the kids are getting at a young age. I think what we have seen in terms of like data collection from the professional level that we want to bring down that we want to bring down to the flag football and to USA football is just that knowledge of what is out there. Um, when we were growing up, it was bigger, faster, stronger, mm -hmm. right? How how do how do I lift more weights? How do I put this over my head? I need to run faster. I need to gain more weight. And you've just seen that that's not how you get better. And that might work for some people because that's exactly what they need to do, and they got lucky. But the majority of us need to get more limber. They need to figure out how to keep that flag low. They need to, uh, you know, they might not be the biggest quarterback for tackle football, but they might be perfect for flag, and they need to be able to throw the ball in different exactly. arm slots. And so that data, when you do it right, 
really allows for those personalized development plans. And I think that's what's really cool about this partnership is, is that there are, they are out there, right? There are athletes that would be perfect for flag football. We find them and we give those to young athletes so they know who to follow and they know who to be like. And, and that's, that's what really I have found freeing in my career because that was, that was tough when, when, you, when you didn't have like kind of those idols to follow and you knew who they were and how they played and you can watch some film, but like, how, how do I do that? How do I get better? And, and not only that guy was good when he's in the pros and I'm watching him now, but what was he like in high school? Was he 170 and now he's like 220? Like, oh, okay, so I got time to gain weight. I don't have to do all this now. And I think that's really is that the key to that data is the longevity and being able to kind of follow the career arc of a player. I think what's really cool about that and, and really cool about what you are what you were doing, allowing the athletes to have and control their own data is that's applicable in flag, but across any sport. and. I believe that is a, a, one of the tools in the toolkit for, our, for an athlete to see where they are, understand their foundation. It doesn't set their ceiling, but they know where they stand and then they can begin to build to get to that next level, wherever that is. So, um, you know, when we're talking to parents and USA Football has our football development models, right? So flag football is one of many entry points to mm -hmm. the sport of football. So from a development standpoint, you know, we're looking at uh, human first, athlete second, football player third. Sure. So um, human, basic movement, passion for the game, have fun, right? Be engaged with coaches that um, are really trying to develop you mentally to be ready to take on uh, uh, what it is to be an athlete. Um, but then also, how does that translate off the field? Athlete, functional movement, uh, that's I guess where, where data would, would come in, mm -hmm. right? Um, uh, how well do you move in space? How strong are you? What's your speed? What's your power? Um, how that applies to other sports? And then as you progress and you have physical maturity uh, and, and emotional maturity, then you start getting into sports specific and how that applies um, to basketball or to sure. football or to flag. Um, so having that data as your baseline to say, okay, I'm 12 years old. This is my height. This is my weight. This is what genetically I am working with. This is where I sit against other people that are on my same level yeah. of my age in my position in the sport. Okay, great. I'm, I'm at that. I'm higher than that. I'm below. Okay. Now take that and get and prepare yourself to mm -hmm. take that next step. Um, so that is a great tool to elevate an athlete to do that. I always talk about the context that it provides, right? And if you were to say like, oh, I'm going to go buy a house and you're like, how much is it? Okay, well, how many bathrooms does it have? Mm -hmm. How many square feet? Oh, so you want more data. If I give you more data, you can make a better decision on whether you should buy that house. And is that house worth it? It's the same situation for an athlete, right? Like, oh, he threw for 4,000 yards in high school. Did they throw every, how many times did they throw the ball? How many points did they score when they threw the ball? Who's he throwing the ball to? Right. Like, did he have a huge all line? How many D1 players were on his team? Like, there's all of these questions and data and information that make that number a lot more relevant. And I think sometimes parents, and I got kids now too, you get obsessed with the number. Like, mm -hmm. uh, oh, he's got to do this in order to get a scholarship. He's got to do this in order to be the next Patrick Mahomes or this, to mean, whatever it is, right? And really, it's about that journey and collecting and understanding that data in the context of who your athlete is and who you are as an athlete. And I think that's really what we have seen. And so when parents ask me, like, what data is important? I say, well, it really depends. What, what position does your kid play? What does he like? What does he find important? What is fun for him to look at? Because the worst case scenario is if you're asking him to collect data that he hates doing, he doesn't want to apply himself, and he doesn't know how it's applicable. Because then you're, those are he's not going to have consistent data, he's not going to care what it says, and he's not going to ever apply it. So don't do that. Find something, a device, and there's tons out there from GPS devices, Apple Watches, Whoops, Auras, there's stuff that goes in your shoes, there's, you know, stuff that measures your gait and your posture. And there's stuff if you're worried about concussions or stuff. For, I mean, there's, there's tons of data and information out there that you can just start simple with your athlete and that you want to apply. And, and okay, this is where we want to get. And this is how we're going to build. And, and if they like it and uh, the athlete and the, the user finds it uh, useful and, and can get improve, improve, you'll see improvements throughout their game. And then you can start layering on other things. So it always scares me when parents show up and they got like 10 different devices. So I was like, oh gosh. Like <laughs> now only do you not need like 
a software to handle all the devices, but you need a data scientist to make sure that they're in the right spot. And the data, like, just start with one, then add two, then maybe get to three. But like, that, that's it's really just for that context of that house and what you're buying and how you want to layer data and information in there. And I, I, that's that usefulness and that making it applicable is something we always strive to be. Is is, is how can you make this applied? And I just think that's. That's what's been really fun to be at the USA football and see all these kids out there and uh, run around. And um, We were just at the LMU event uh, with the LA Rams and the girls flag football and we were doing speed with some of them. And it was amazing to see some of these girls that run track, how well put together their gait is. That, 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 that. And I'm like, oh, you're fast, fast. Yes. And then there was other, other girls who were like, oh, I don't want to run. And they ran. I'm like, well, look, let's look at the difference. And you can see the difference and like, and then they get it. Right, and it's that being applied, was, which is really key and, and, and fun to see. And so we're always super excited to be part of this because it's those connections, that one athlete that you might change that says like, oh, maybe I can't play a receiver. Oh, maybe I can't. Maybe I should make this squad. Oh, maybe I should give a little more effort to try to be a starter. Like, that's always fun to be a part of. I think having that, you, you mentioned um, the girls' flag. I mean, what a, what a just untapped potential that, you know, now the opportunity of flag football has given girls across the country mm -hmm. to get into the game. And having a, a resource like you're able to provide where, you know, you can show um, a, a girl who's new to the sport that here's where you sit across other similar situated people where maybe there is a, well, I'm new to the sport, I'm new to football, I'm not sure if this is something for me. Well, wait a minute. No, I'm, I'm pretty good. Yeah. And it lights that fire yeah. to keep going. I, it's, um, it's great in that regard. You mentioned some par parents. Yeah. So, um, if you have a parent or a player that's trying to dip their toe into data, um, you know what would you recommend to them? I start with the Apple Watch. Um, it's easy. Uh, it's on. Um, uh, it's fashionable. Uh, so it's like it's not a big ask. It's not always that useful in uh, every sporting environment, right? But you can put like a wristband over it and wear it and try that out. Um, as you're getting more serious, I, I try GPS mm -hmm. uh, for practice to measure load. Like if you're really worried about how often you're, how often and how much your kid is practicing, uh, that that's what I'd I'd say is the the load for the GPS is pretty interesting. And then if you're playing, you know, uh, really with kind of like how can I get that incremental, uh, um, uh, looking for those incremental improvements. Stuff that we do with speed is pretty cool. There's like every athlete wants to run faster, jump higher. And so like if you look for things that really are really measuring those and obviously I'm biased towards what we do with speed, but like um, th those things are really key to anyone's athletic success. And um, the, the, the ones you can find that uh, give you a great baseline, mm -hmm. boom, perfect. And then let's learn from the baseline and then come back and do it again, right? That's the same with like an Apple Watch. All right, well, let's wear it for a week and see what we learn from your sleep and so what we learn from this. And then like, okay, let's, let's rework. Let's, let's, let's try to get you bed earlier. Let's try to feed you earlier or whatever it is and see what we come back with with those numbers. And the same with like GPS and load, right? Like, oh, this is gonna be a really heavy week of practice. She's not only has flag, but she's also doing soccer and she also has whatever dance. Mm -hmm. Like she's busy, you know, she has nine practices in seven days. Like, no wonder she's worn out in school. Like how worn out is she? Let's throw a device on her and practice and yep. see. I think those are those are key things, and, and they should be fun to start out with. I think sometimes data um, it is soulless and is an object and it is objective, right. and so people uh, take it very serious. And uh, our company and our, our co-founders and everyone kind of involved. Our goal is to make it more approachable and fun and applied. Is the word I'll get used again, but like. If you can give it some personality and let people know, like, these are cool, numbers are fun. They can, they, they're not dangerous, right? They're not gonna hurt you. You can use them to your benefit, and you should be if you're not. Um, that, that's always what we try to get across to, uh, to families, to parents, to kids, and, and to, to professionals, honestly. Uh, cause sometimes they feel the most jaded and hurt with the data and information collected off them. And we have to tell them like, it's okay. Yeah. Like there was a stuff collected off you as a rookie. You should want it when you're in year eight. How, cause you finally get to know, like, what did I do to my body over the, my 20s, right? And, like, uh, that stuff is key. What we're navigating now with our um, adult athletes on the national team space is we have so much data coming in, mm -hmm. right? So um, you have their strength and conditioning, you have their biometrics, you have their body composition, you have their, their sleep and recovery. Um, and we are working through the phase of educating our coaches on the importance of some of those external performance factors and how they impact 
our athletes on the field. Mm -hmm. um, but then also helping the athletes realize why all of these different things are important. And if one of them are off, you're not getting enough sleep, how that can impact you. You're not hydrated. You're not eating properly. Um, and you could be, you know, a five star on the field and a couple things are out of whack and all of a sudden you got a bad day. Yeah. Um, so taking, being as efficient as we can um, with the data that we collect and then using that data to get, go back out to the athlete in a meaningful way that they're not combing through, uh, you know, four pages worth yeah. of things. Like, I don't know what to do with this. Yeah. Um, that's what we're navigating right For now. For sure. Because it's, it's tremendously important. So um, what you're saying is tremendously relevant. And, and it's even more important that you have those good quality coaches, right? Because like I was mentioning about it being, not having a personality and whatnot, th yeah. that it needs it needs to come with some sort of context of the that the coach has that the data doesn't have. Maybe right. the reason he didn't slept was because his plane was delayed and but like an Apple Watch doesn't know that. Doesn't yeah. know that you were delayed and whatnot and you arrived at three in the morning, but hey, you gotta play. Like we're gonna get you out there and you gotta play and so we're gonna sacrifice. Obviously you're not gonna get some sleep, but we're gonna get you out there. And I think that coach comes to you with that context and also knows you as a person, right? Knows do you need a nudge or do you need to push? Do you need this is the fifth time I've told you or is this the first time mm -hmm. I've told you? Right? Is like, is this something that we've measured once and we're not quite sure, but I want to mention it, that I want to talk about it a little bit and see if you're interested in changing, or is this something that we've measured for the last six months and we've gone over and you've steadily improved, but now you've had a drop off? Like, what is it that we need to talk about? And I think all of those things require a coach. And most people always ask, like, oh, AI is going to take over and so and so is going to be calling plays. So I was like, no. Like that's not how it's gonna work. Players always respond to that emotional kind of another human being telling them the story, uh, getting them fired up and uh, telling, giving them those, whether it's a gentle nudge or a push on how to get better. Because all of us want to coach better. All of us want to play better. All of us want to see better football. We want to play better football. That's universal is how do I get better? And uh, that, that's what we think data can really help people solve is uh, find that information that's key and, and it'll help you get better. Amazing. And I know one of the things that we're really looking forward to as we begin to roll out the developmental phases of athletes coming into our high performance pipeline is um, using testing, combine testing, 20 yard dash, standing broad jump, vertical, um, uh, 5105 L mm -hmm. drill, and not only using that to help us identify where the next generation of talent is coming from, whether that on the boys' side or the girls' side, but also back to really the core of breakaway is here's your data, yeah. here's where you stand. Um, now let's also help you develop yourself, whether genetically you're at the point where you're up here. And I was not one of those people, right? I played offensive line. I'm not six, eight, you know, 350 pounds. I'm not going division one. That's okay. That's the yeah. reality of my situation. But I have a baseline somewhere else and I can take my genetic gifts and go somewhere and be successful. Um, and we want to be able to help with that uh, for someone coming through our pipeline, whether they end up with us or not. And I think that's where there's a lot of synergy between our two the, groups. The, it gives me, it makes my hair stand up when I talk about, when you, when you say stuff like that, because it's like, I played football because it was fun. Yeah. And honestly, a lot of what I stopped playing football because it wasn't fun anymore, right? I was beat up, my knees hurt. I didn't like where I was at on the depth chart and this was happening. And you see that happen to kids at all ages. And the key is, is the longer you can make it fun, the truth is the longer kids will play. And that's what I think all this stuff is. And if you have a personalized development plan that can tell you how to play football at the next level and you find that fun, you're going to do it. Right. But the, the key is like it's it's play. That's why we're all here. It's a, it's, a, it's a fun, beautiful game that teaches all the things that you were talking about at the Absolutely. beginning. And, and like the more fun you can make it, the more that they're out there playing hard and, and, and for each other and, and uh, trying to improve and have a good time like that. That's the, that's the, that's the key. Uh, so Dave, one of the things when we talk about athletics and it's just inherent to participation is, is injury, yeah. right? And, uh, and data is back to what we were saying earlier is a useful tool. Maybe give us some, some thoughts on um, as athletes now are, are getting this, how other groups, either you're experiencing the NFL or, sure. or with the athletes, how they've used data to look at injury prevention. So it starts with that baseline, right? We were talking about that baseline of who you are and having a, a good sense of what you were doing when you were not hurt. Um, that has always been the holy grail of what the you know trainers have talked about is we got to get you back to where you were. Do you feel it? But when we were playing, it was like, how do you feel? Mm -hmm. Right? Does it feel? Does it feel good? And, and it was all feel. And as an athlete, you're like, it feels good enough to play. It doesn't feel like it did, but it feels good enough to play. And you're you're always going to sacrifice some feeling to get it out back on the field. So um, data 
doesn't know what doesn't have any feelings. And so like that's the key is like if you're measuring the right things, you create a baseline. So for um, offensive linemen, whether it's your ability to get out of your stance, what's your ability to kick slide, which with your ability to punch, get your arms here, there, whatever it is. For a receiver, how well are you running? What is your gait like? How well do you stop and start? Um, are you a top end speed right away or do you get top end speed later? Mm -hmm. Okay, now you get hurt. Everyone's sad, everyone's frustrated, but now we know where you gotta get back to. And that's what the key is. Like, okay, now we can measure this. So as a receiver, oh, I'm remeasuring the same things we did for speed. Dave, sorry, we're not letting you get back there until you're 90% of where you can get from your start until you're 95% of your top end speed. We're not even gonna let you out in practice. Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry, offensive line. You can't, get, you can't get down into your stance like you had before. And it's less of like, oh, you can't do that. It's like when you are unable to get in those, the basic movements that you had before, something else is gonna get hurt. Yeah. Like I, I always use an example when Kobe hurt his shoulder and it was after his Achilles. And everyone's like, oh, well, you know, it's I'm like they're 100% connected. Because if you can't get off the ground in the same way they used to, that means what you've been doing for the last, what, 35 years of his shot is now he's gone from here to here. And now that new pattern is not what he's used to and boom, he hurts his shoulder. And so it doesn't, when you do it for the first 10 times, it doesn't hurt. But once you do it that 2,000th time, your arm isn't used to it, boom, it hurts. And it's the same thing in, out there in football. Oh, my hamstring feels good. I think I can go out there and run. But your gait is slightly different on the right than the left. Your left is working hard, boom, you pop, you, you pop your left hamstring. That happened to me three times. Yeah. Right? And so, like, I think that understanding of how this data really helps baseline and then where you want to get back to is, is the key. And they call it return to play protocols. And you can do those on your own. And I think that's one thing as, as parents and kids to better understand what are your baselines, what what is important to your position, measure that, at least you have a good baseline, and then you start layering in other things. You can do some cool stuff with injury prevention. Now we know where you got where you where, where you should be. Uh, so if you feel a little nicked up, let's prevent this injury, but then also return to play. Oh, I got injured. How do I get back to where I was? That's that's a that's a key in every sport. Yeah, so again, another a great use of data as a tool in concert with other things. Mm -hmm. Speaking, you know, with your medical professionals, your athletic trainers, your coaches, understanding where you sit. Yep. Using this as a okay, well, I, I don't feel good today. Oh well, there's something going on over here that yeah. we're tracking on. Yeah. It's that's yeah, it's very important. And then sleep and, and hydrate. That's right. <laughs> if you're hurt, sleep, sleep and sleep some more. That's that'll get you better. Absolutely.